We said if you're operating at the 2.4 gigahertz band, your signal will go further than if you're operating at the 5 gigahertz band. And that's the free space path loss model that's literally predicting that. So you can see in this table here, if I'm transmitting in the 2.4 gigahertz band and I travel 10 meters, then my loss will be 60 dB. If I travel 100 meters, then my loss would be 80 dB. And again, a very simple model, which is just calculating my loss based on the distance that I travel and the frequency that I'm operating on. So when you're doing the line of sight model, you have to take into account something that's referred to as the Fresnel effect. And so in this example, you can see that my antennas have line of sight between them. However, there are buildings between them and that although they're not obstructing the physical line of sight, they are giving you a reflected signal. And what's going to happen is that reflective signal, if it's a factor of a half wavelength, will actually be destructive to the received signal that's coming in the straight line between the two antennas. And so what we need to do is we need to make sure our antennas are high enough to not have a received signal that's within a half wavelength. And we call that the first Fresnel zone. And you can calculate the Fresnel zone because it's based on the wavelength, so it's based on the frequency. So you can calculate the Fresnel zone and you need to be able to clear 60% of the first Fresnel zone. And so again, there's lots of simple models that you can key in. Here's the frequency that I'm operating at. Here's the distance between my antenna and the building. And it will tell you the height that you need to raise your antenna to, to avoid that first Fresnel zone, or at least the first 60% of that first Fresnel zone. Now, normally you don't have to worry about the Earth bulge. So if you're doing, you know, line of sight deployments, bridge networks in a city area, and it's a very short distance, you know, maybe hundreds of feet, maybe half a mile, you don't have to worry about the Earth bulge. But if ever you do a deployment of Wi-Fi using parabolic dishes between two points which are quite some distance apart, then you do have to take into account the curvature of the Earth's surface. So again, very unusual that this will happen, but again, if you're dealing with several miles between your transmitter and your receiver, then you will have to calculate not only the Fresnel zone, but the earth bulge as well. And that means you need to raise your antenna up a little bit higher. So line of sight models are fairly simplistic. The non-line of sight models are much, much more complicated. And the models vary in their approach. There's lots of different models that can be used, lots of different techniques, if you like, for calculating what the coverage is and where you're able to achieve the higher data rates. The more sophisticated the model, the more expensive the model, the more parameters you have to put in, but the more accurate the model typically is. Some of the less costly models do not input so many variables. So say, for instance, some of them will model just the surrounding walls, but if you put in cubicles and things like that, it doesn't alter the propagation pattern, i.e. it doesn't take into account cubicles and other things when it's calculating the coverage. So when you're choosing a model, it's very important to understand the limitations of the model. For instance, you might have a model that only works indoors and you cannot use it outdoors. If you use it outdoors, you will not get accurate results. And so it's very important to understand the limitations of your model and where it can be used. Because only if you do that will you start to be able to actually have a model that can actually predict with some level of accuracy and really help you with your site plan. 
There are several tools available on the market that allow you to develop a predictive model. This slide is showing you a few of those. A common element among these tools is the ability to import a site plan, where this site plan can show walls, cubicles, obstacles, etc. When you import these plans, these plans can actually be in different formats. Many people will often have the site plan in a PNG or a JPEG format, um, much like you have with your personal pictures. Some models will even allow you to bring in your CAD drawing that's from your computer-aided design software tools. Different models will allow you to import different kind of plans. And then what you do is you put in the walls and the cubicles or whatever other obstructions that you want to add. And again, some plans will take that into account and some planning tools will not. So again, knowing that ahead of time will help you choose the right model. You then drop your access points on top of the plan and then you look at the radiation patterns that are coming within that site plan. Some tools will automatically determine where to put those access points. Some tools will ask you to do it manually. Some tools will allow you to move the access points in a fairly simplistic way by dragging and dropping. Other ones are much more complicated. So again, using the tools and practicing with them is great. And you can see it's projecting these kind of like coverage maps and from that I can actually check with what I'm actually seeing when I go out on site. Is this a good model? Is it helping me to predict? Where is it telling me to look? Is it saying oh there's going to be some problems in this area and so maybe I'll spend more time there doing more measurements. So a couple of terms that you should be familiar with. Decibel Everybody should know what a decibel is. And again, remember it's a ratio between two powers, but it's expressed in a logarithmic form. And the reason I do that is because the difference between a transmit and receive power levels is so large that I'd be talking about millions and billions of zeros. And so by representing it in a logarithmic form, the number becomes more manageable and I can talk about 30 or 40 or 60 dBm loss over the air, for instance. Link budget is a summation of all your gains and losses. And the main purpose of a link budget is to make sure that you have enough received signal strength on your receiver to be able to recover the signal and get back to your ones and zeros. The Fresnel effect. The Fresnel effect is when you're looking at line of sight deployments, such as a bridge between two buildings. And what you need to do is you need to clear 0.6 of the first Fresnel zone. And so what you have to do is you have to look, not only do I have line of sight, but what are the obstacles in between and how high up are those obstacles? It's a very simple model that you can use to calculate the Fresnel zone. I didn't talk about the fade margin, but it's a very important concept that you understand. So remember my link budget is determining my received signal strength. Well, of course, my RF environment changes all the time. And so sometimes my signal is going to drop and sometimes it's going to be stronger. And so what I want to do is when I do my link budget, I will assume a certain fade margin that maybe it will fluctuate up and down by 2 or 3 dB and I'll put that into my estimate when I'm defining the cell edges that I not only do I have to have that receiver sensitivity but I need a bit of a fade margin just in case the RF environment changes like when people are moving around the office etc and they change the RF environment. So let's talk about what we covered in this lesson. We started off talking about signal propagation and we talked about how important it was that I have a reflected signal and when I'm operating the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz band my signal reflects more than it's absorbed and this is what enables me to be able to communicate with an access point even though I don't have line of sight with that access point. 
We also talked about the link budget and how I add up my losses and gains. And the most important thing there is that I need to receive enough signal strength that I can recover your ones and zeros. And so we talked about receiver sensitivity and how important it is to know what devices you have being deployed in the network so that you can plan your network around the device that has the weakest receiver sensitivity, which typically is your IP phone. We then went on to talk about some predictive models and we talked about the line of sight models and we talked about the free space path loss model and we talked about the Fresnel zones and so those models can be used to actually calculate what distance and what data rates you can attain by going between one point and another point line of sight. We then talked about the non-line of sight models and how that has to take into account reflected signals and also absorption by obstacles. And we looked at some of the tools that I can use and put in walls, etc., and practice generating heat maps with the Cisco access points and the Cisco antennas.